disaster. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know who planned this thing, but it's, it's, we, we should be on that side and they should be on this side. I'm not sure how that ended up like this. They're crossing each other. That's the worst decision uh, ever made in city. Trust worst decision ever made in the city. Yes, of course. Every single day. It doesn't matter weekend or every single day is the traffic now. That was the reaction we received from some drivers last Friday when we first told you about a perceived traffic issue right in the center of our city. Now, here's the situation we'll remind you of again. Back last January, the city opened a new York Street off the Gardner eastbound, and they tore down the old ramp in part to open up some bike lanes here just to the south of me and some park space at the foot of York and Queens Quay, which has yet to be opened up. But here's the issue. The vehicles coming off the Gardner Expressway, many of them, you can see one just up there, they're forcing themselves left so they can make a left-hand turn on York Street. Some of the cars on Lakeshore are trying to get right. You actually have cars crisscrossing each other. And with all that Gardner traffic trying to make a left, it's actually impeding the Lakeshore traffic, creating significant backlog, new backlog, on Lakeshore East. Well, today we caught up with Toronto's manager of traffic operations to see what, if anything, is being done. You know, in a city that is suffocating in gridlock, it appears that we've taken down two old off-ramps and put up a new one and created even more traffic. Well, right now, it's still in a construction zone. It may not look like it, but the contractor is still out there actively working. Our timing for signals are still in their construction mode. Is there a way, you know, we've seen at other off-ramps off the Gardner to maybe stagger that traffic between Lakeshore and the Gardner off-ramp? Maybe Lakeshore can move through and then they stop and then the Gardner traffic comes so we don't have cars you know, as we see every day, zigzagging between each other to try to get right and try to get left. So that is one of the things that I'm sure the, the staff will be looking at. It's what we would call a phasing operation with the signals. Following an environmental assessment that dates back to 2008, city staff presented councillors with six different potential options, including this one that would have split the traffic coming off the Gardner. One ramp would have intersected with Lakeshore for vehicles turning left on York, or veer to the right if you're driving straight towards Bay Street. The options were given to Toronto's Public Works and Infrastructure Committee and then went to Council where a different option was chosen. Now, City News has reached out to the Chair of Public Works and Infrastructure, Councillor Jay Robinson, who was re-elected just last week. Now, on three separate occasions over the last week and a half, we've requested an interview, yet no one from Councillor Robinson's office has responded to our repeated requests for an interview. You know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. There was a desire to have bike lanes along Lakeshore, and, and to do that, you had to change the, the ramp. When these discussions are taking place, they often take place in an abstract sense of beautifying the city. And at times, the mo first question to ask is how the downtown accessibility will be impacted by this change. It never gets debated, or if it gets debated, it ends up being a footnote. The greater the impedance to get to the city, um, the less would be the commerce that's generated here. If you're a downtown councillor in downtown Toronto, you are at uh, the councillor for the largest employment hub in Canada. You cannot just be someone who's oblivious to the, to the, to the billions of dollars of value created every day in, this, this, in the downtown core. Now, as you just heard a little bit from the city there, they have done their own time test and found during the evening rush from Park Lawn all the way to Bay. They say on average it takes a driver a little over 13 minutes to drive that distance with this new ramp that's been opened up. Now, ahead on City News, we're going to show you what our own time test found. And we're also going to hear more from Murtaza Hader, who you just heard from our transit expert from Ryerson University. He tells us just how quickly you would need to be moving continually to drive that 10 kilometer stretch during rush hour to do it in just 13 minutes. Today on City News, we've been telling you about a little bit of a traffic head scratcher for drivers. As we told you earlier on City News at five and six, back in January, the city opened up a brand new York Gardner off ramp for eastbound traffic. And they took down the old ramp in an effort to open up some bike lanes here to the south as well as a park, which is yet to be opened at the foot of York and Queens Key. Now, here's one of the issues. The traffic coming off the Gardner is merging right here with Lakeshore traffic and cars coming off the Gardner are trying to force themselves left while cars like this one right here on Lakeshore are trying to veer right. You've got cars crisscrossing and it's actually backing up traffic on Lakeshore. 
Now, the city has done their own little time test here, and they claim that to drive along eastbound Lakeshore during the evening rush hour, it takes you only about an average of 13 minutes from Park Lawn all the way to Bay Street. Last Friday, we did our own test during your usual busy Friday in Toronto and found it took us 22 minutes. Today, we asked Toronto's manager of traffic operations about the city's calculation. The one thing I can tell you is the numbers that we provided to you is an average over three hours. So it isn't about just doing one uh, run. It is. It takes all road users that we have going there, and we looked at the numbers and did the average based on that. I think the average driver might find it hard to get from Park Lawn to Bay even during the, the afternoon to, to in 13 minutes. You know, it's as I said, it'll be in the you know depending on what time you start, it could be 13 or it could be 10. The distance from Park Lawn to Bay along Lakeshore is about 10 kilometers. Transit expert Murtaza Hyder believes the 13-minute average during rush hour simply isn't accurate. I have monitored traffic in this, in this corridor um, either anecdotally or myself when I rely on models that Google Maps and other apps provide. Um, I have never seen an average travel time from Park Lawn and Lakeshore to downtown to be 13 minutes. To do this stretch of 10 kilometers in 13 minutes, you have to be moving at 46 kilometers an hour, which is almost like un, not a free flow because the speed has to be 90 to 100 kilometers, but it's very, very fast. The city notes that they're still working with the traffic signals here to try and get things right to find that sweet spot. One thing we brought up to them that they do say that they're looking at is staggering the traffic lights, the cars coming off the off-ramp here at Simcoe and the cars here at uh, on Lakeshore. They're pretty much getting the same green light, advancing the same time, compounding that bottleneck that you're seeing here. They say they are looking into it and they hope to find a solution that alleviates at least some of the issue here in the months ahead.